welcome once again to the Wisdom of the Zodiac Summary Class. Today's lesson will be taken from the Wisdom of the Zodiac, Volume 4, and that's Chapter 23, titled Aquarius, The Essence of Love. This is a beautiful series of books, as you are familiar with them, and every month I will bring a brief summary about one of the full moons that we are about to celebrate. The first paragraph of this chapter is very important and it sets the tone for the entire month's meditation and thoughtful process. Let me read that for you. It's taken from page 273. If you have your book, follow along or close your eyes and just listen to these beautiful and inspiring words. Whenever people come together in the name of Christ, they create tremendous force fields that magnetically attract the attention of great ones and angels, bringing beauty and synthesis to the world. It is so important to come together in the name of beauty, goodness, righteousness, and truth, in the name of the common good, in the name of service for humanity. Whenever people forget their little selves and come together for a spiritual service, they become transmitters of light, love, and harmony. Isn't that beautiful? So in the esoteric wisdom, the Christ is called the Aquarius, the energy of Aquarius, the water bearer, the great being who gives the water of life, of great abundance, that when you drink from this water, you will thirst no more. Think about the symbology of that and how important it is to have the kind of immortal, eternal, never-ending flow of love, because Christ was also called the avatar of sacrificial love, so that you have that great essence of love that is pouring into you and then out of you toward all of life. This is the first meaning of this keynote, of this first paragraph, so that when we come together we discuss these high ideas, we meditate, we think about the keynotes of this full moon. We are attracting the attention of great ones, of angels, of human beings who want to be healed, who want to, to have more goodness and beauty and harmony and hope in their life. We become transmitters of these energies. We are not coming together whether we are doing it on the internet or in person when we come together for a full moon celebration. We are not doing it in order to get something for ourselves. We are not saying, what's in it for me? What is it that I can grab from these people? Maybe a little hug, a little love, a little good cheer. That may be a side effect, but the main and key idea is, I will come together with all of you so that together we can transmit light and love and harmony to all beings all over the world. So this is the keynote. And in order to do this, we are going to focus on five energies throughout this full moon period. Aquarius has five rivers, we are told in this book on page 274, that correspond to five energies which will bring a new age for humanity. So as you are celebrating these um, five days of the full moon, which I usually talk about the day of the full moon, two days before, two days after. Take each day of these five days, each day think about and meditate on one of these rivers of energy that are so beautiful. And how do you meditate? You read the entire passage of that one day's meditation and you think about one keynote and think about what it means. So for example, let's do the first one. The first energy is called the energy of cooperation. Do we need cooperation in the world? We certainly do. Look what it says. It is by the inspiration and power of this energy that people will forget all that separates them from each other and come together for the common good. People separate because of their ideologies, because they believe only in one kind of political system, one kind of economic way of doing things, one kind of religious belief, even within one religion, and they don't leave any room for discussion about other points of view. So when we are taking a position of ideological um, purity, quote unquote, 
we will leave no room to discuss, share ideas, and come together with other people, nor do we give other people the opportunity to discuss and share what it is that they think, what it is that they feel is the right way to live. So in order for us to have the energy of cooperation flowing through our life, we must be willing to listen. And listening is the cornerstone of good communication. If we don't listen, we are not communicating. And how many times do you sit with a group of people and only speak and you don't listen to anyone? Or you just tune out everyone through something that you are thinking about and you're not interested in listening. So in order to cooperate, you must be a good listener. You must be able to put aside your ideological posturing and be able to say, I'll listen to you. And very importantly, when we do this, we will be able to listen to our solar angel, to the inner wisdom, to the inner guidelines that we will get. And that's important. If we say the way I think, the way I do things, the way I feel is the only right way, we will not listen to anybody, to anything. So think about the idea of cooperation. In order to cooperate, people search for the things that they have in common with each other. So in order to have cooperation, you must be open and willing to listen. Now that doesn't mean cooperation that you will believe everything everybody is saying, but you are willing to listen. You are willing to have a discussion. You are willing to give and take with respect. The second energy is called opportunity. This is such an important um, keynote that I'd like you to really, really think about. What is the opportunity that life is giving you every day? One of the things that I have found in the courses that I teach and the people that I mentor is how difficult it is sometimes for people to find joy in their life or love in their life. And one of the reasons for that difficulty is because they are not able to observe the opportunities for joy, for love, that life gives them every single minute. So think about opportunity and how many kinds of opportunities you have every day for joy, for love, for changing your life, for doing something good for someone. Now the third energy is called brotherhood. Christ symbolized the age of brotherhood when he told his disciples to walk after the man who was carrying a pitcher of water that was overflowing. The pitcher symbolized the abundance of life we are going to walk after. I will leave that symbology for you to think about, but remember in the biblical story, Christ told his disciples to go and find the man with the pitcher of water and follow that man, and then they went to the upper room and had the mystery of communion and of true brotherhood. Now the fourth energy of Aquarius, we are told, is the energy of synthesis. This is really important. Now listen to this. This is on page 276. Synthesis means to bloom your flower as an individual, as a nation, as a humanity, to be that which is destined for you to be the image of God. That is so important because each of us is a piece of the great puzzle. Somebody once said, if we thought of all of humanity as one tapestry, and each of us making one little thread, one little dot of that tapestry, what a beautiful image that would be for us, that we are important, that there is something in us that we can contribute toward that tapestry. The destiny of humanity is to be a symphony, to bring all these billions of people together like pieces of one jigsaw puzzle in such a way that they eventually, when they are complete, the face of God shines out. So when you think of yourself, when you look in the mirror, don't see pain and misery, but instead see how the wisdom of God shines through you. Your face is a part of that big face of God. I like that. The fifth energy is called the energy of enlightenment. This is so important. How do we view life with truth or with falseness, with addictions and obsessive compulsive ways of thinking about life? Or do we see the truth of what is really going on? 
Now this is to be able to see life and truth, but there's something else here. The first time that you intuitively feel the purpose of your life, your enlightenment starts. You must ask yourself, why is my purpose? What is my purpose, rather? Why am I here? How can I go to my destination? Who am I? These are very important questions. And I can tell you that life becomes one step after another step of joy and discovery when you ask that question. And all of us want that. I know when people say, I want to know the purpose of my life, they're very intense. They have tears in their eyes. We all want meaning and purpose and direction. And that's so important. If we don't have that, we have no will energy. We don't know where we're going. And we will feel when we're in our 60s, 70s, we will feel lost. We will feel like we have no meaning in our life. So right now, no matter how old you are, no matter what you've done in your life, how far along you've gotten in your field, in your profession, just stop and say, what is the purpose of my life? Where am I going? Why am I going there? So that you can feel that you have direction, you have purpose, because you do. Each human being is unique in the gifts that they have. And you have a gift to give to others. You have a gift to give to all of life. Now, what is this enlightenment also? Many, many sides of it. It's so important. Let me read this. In perfect love, fear does not exist. So you are going to have that feeling that there is perfect love in the world, that there is love that comes from Christ, from God, from all of nature of love around you, that nature loves you, that nature gives you every opportunity to find a purpose in your direction in life. You might not see that opportunity, so you need to start thinking, what is the opportunity that is before me today? tonight, starting from tomorrow. These are very important questions to ask yourself. God is the source of love. Once you start responding to the energy of enlightenment, you will know that your greatest responsibility, this is important, is to spread love and to be love, not to have love. Isn't that important? So when you spread love and you are love, you are going to get all the love that you need, it will fill you. You see, this turns the whole philosophy of give me, give me, give me upside down. We are so imbued with the philosophy of taking for ourselves, looking out for ourselves, asking the question, what's in it for me? In fact, whole businesses thrive around the question of what's in it for me? But we're going to turn that around. And we're going to say, what is it that I can give to you? What is the love that I can spread to you. And that is the love of the heart, love of the higher thinking, love of the wisdom that you have inside of you. And when you have that pouring out of you, there is no room for hatred. There is no room for spitefulness and deceit. Separation. Look at this beautiful statement that I'd like to finish our keynote with today. You must know that you are love and that no hatred exists within you. You must know that you are light and no darkness exists within you. You must know that. That's an affirmation. So when you look at yourself in the mirror, say, I am love. I am light. There's no darkness inside of me. There is no darkness and hatred inside of me. And there is no spitefulness and separativeness in me. That I will come together with all my brethren in the Spirit of Christ so that we can be together as one family, one nation, one humanity. When I look at the very sad events in the world, I see that it is because of the lack of love, the lack of the sense of cooperation, sense of brotherhood, the sense of synthesis of seeing all of us as one, one tapestry forming the face of God. I see it from that perspective. And then when I see something really working, a family, a marriage really working, a business working really well, I see the love existing, the love for our customers, the love for our students and patrons, the love 
for our friends and co-workers. These are the things that make us who we are. So in the next five days during the full moon, take time out from your busy schedule and see how you can increase, give and spread that sense of love through number one, cooperation. Meditate on what that means. Second, opportunity. What is giving me uh, a new opportunity today? And you start observing all of life around you and find out what is the opportunity today for me to spread and give love. Number three, brotherhood. Think of every thing that exists in the universe, plant, animal, mineral, human beings, children, men and women, as brothers and sisters to you so that you know how to treat them. The fourth one would be synthesis. How do I become one dot in the face of God? Isn't that beautiful? And the fifth one is enlightenment. What is it in my life that needs enlightenment, that needs to give me the path of my purpose and direction so that I am living a purposeful and directed life? So you have five days of beautiful meditations that you can do. Now we are going to do the meditation for this full moon, and I will guide us through it. You're going to sit relaxed and put a nice smile on your face, and uh, close your eyes. We will say the Great Invocation together. We will sound three ohms, either in silence or out loud. And then the seed thought is, my essence is love. I will guide us through that, and then at the end we will have you repeat after me the mantra, more radiant than the sun. Okay, so if you're ready, close your eyes, sit up straight, breathe deeply, <clears throat> put your troubles aside and think of Christ as being a great avatar of love, spreading love to all nations, all people, of all religions around the world. Christ is the head of all humanity, not just one religion or one faction of humanity. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known. Let purpose guide the little wills of men, the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center, which we call the race of men, let the plan of love and light work out and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. The meditation seed thought is, my essence is love. I am love. And that question you can ask yourself is, how am I love and how do I spread love? How am I love and how do I spread love? Take two or three minutes. If you need more time, you can pause your video now and think about this beautiful keynote, How Am I Love?
Take a deep breath, and as you exhale, send loving thoughts to some people that you know will need your loving understanding today. As we say the more radiant mantra of unification, repeat after me and think of yourself as a beautiful, radiant, loving light, more radiant than the sun, purer than the snow, subtler than the ether is the self, the spirit within my heart. I am that self. That self am I. Take a deep breath and say Om. May the love, the peace, and the joy of Christ be with you, your family, your group, and all the people that you touch. I hope that you are able to flow with that love toward everything that you do from here on and fill your heart with this essence of love that's coming from the highest avatar in our world. God bless you. Thank you for joining me, and I will see you next time. Have a great day.